It's when you have, they always say as a woman, it's when you have a baby that you can really tell yeah. if you have good but genes you have or good not. Genes. Oh, you certainly thanks do. to God. Thanks to God. But that earlier song was from Darko Vibes and Lyrical Joe. They call this one Bless. It's a new one, I'm told, and so it's just coming yeah, out. Yeah, that's a yeah. great one. Yesterday, I was listening to um, or watching Alan Sherman thing to be more Oh, specific. yeah, the GTP campaign. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. The Great Transformational Plan. Man, yes. The, the thing I love about our politicians is they're good... Um, with the acronym, so UNESCO, yeah. UN, and all that. Then we had one D, one F. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the, but the thing um, I noticed about his speech was that it was still hinged on the success of the Kufado led government. Mm. So it means that he can't extricate himself sure. from the success of the government. Mm. Yeah, so because he kept um, talking about how one D, one F would be done this way, etc. So there will hmm. be great buffers for warehouses and bringing more, better inclusion of the private sector, yeah. etc. But he took a dig at uh, those who tend to talk too much. Well, says, no, not just no. them. <laughs> Quite a number. Even the president <laughs> caught some flack in his speech yesterday. Yeah, it says yeah. Ghana is now becoming a NATO country. NATO. Um, no, no, no action, no action talk, talk only. only yeah. I thought that was quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So we started this year with Yempe uh, Nation. <laughs> and now just a few days into the year, we're told yeah. that we're a NATO country. Yeah. Interesting one, I must say. Yeah. And I think he took a dig at the president, sort of, by talking about, you know, the need to have, you know, a smaller government. And he was saying that we're going to try and uh, do an overhaul of the government institution and try to merge some of the ministries mm. so we can have a lean government. For me, the fact that he's been a part of this government up until this point, and coming out to say that for my government, if you should vote for me, I'm going to have a lean government. What kind of conversation was he having with the president and with other government officials? Did he even suggest that maybe at this point, Mr. President, especially when we're going through this, you need to cut down on your number of ministers, especially because at the moment we have 85 ministers. If we don't have money to take care of ourselves and citizens are paying for a lot of the mistakes that government has made, why do we still have those number of ministers? What role did he play in ensuring? Because clearly we saw that that failed. The president says, my ministers are outstanding. I'm not letting any of them go. I'm not reshuffling. So if you've been a part of this government and this government unfortunately has performed woefully when it comes to the economy, now you come back and tell us that, I think that when you vote for me, I'm going to make sure we have A, B, C, and D. It begs the question, can you really do something and would you really do something? Or is this another hmm. talk shop? Yeah. You know, so if he, he, if he says we become talk only, no action, mm. is he talking about himself as well? I think he needs to answer those questions, and not just him. And this is not a dig at him particularly, but government in totality. Because clearly you know what the problem is. If you tell us that Achia Batimbuya, that means you know the problems exist. What did you do in the last six years to fix that problem? And the thing is that for the portfolio that he was managing, that's mm. a trade ministry, it yeah. is a cabinet ministry. It is. it is a cabinet position. It is. So you're a minister, but you're part of cabinet. Yeah. You're part of cabinet because it is a vital portfolio you're managing. Mm -hmm. And there's supposed to be an interconnection between the government of the day and the political party yeah. that was elected to form the government. Yeah. And that is why we have the unofficial cabinet position of the general secretary of a party of a that is always yeah. in government. Yeah. So it brings us to the question about if we have the two leading politicians among the pack, mm -hmm. and we're talking about him, Alan Kudu Chairman Ting, yeah. and then the Vice President, Dr. Mm. Mahmoud Baumia. Mm. These questions that you and I are asking will pop up. Yeah. Because if you are able to stand before a podium and speak to ordinary voters, whether they are voters of your party at the polls or not, or of the opposition or other smaller political parties, mm. and you are able to espouse some of these beliefs, yeah then it means that these beliefs should go to the core of your own principles and values. Exactly. If you haven't been able to utter them a year, two, three, four, five years before exactly. today, exactly. what and makes what it different than mm -hmm. now you have renewed heart and belief and faith yeah. that your principles of old that are now being revealed today mm -hmm. would be the principles that we should believe in going to the polls in yeah. 2024. Exactly. And let's not kid ourselves. When we started the 1st of January 2023, we 
uh, we started making the decision as to who we're going to vote for mm -hmm. in 2024. Because by 1st January 2024, there's no activity and no time for ordinary Ghanaians to be thinking about who to vote. They've yeah, already made, they up, made their up their minds. Their minds. True. The only thing that we've noticed, at least from the year 2008, mm -hmm. is that... Well, we've seen that during the last half of the election year, a lot of things tend to um, change. And so either it's because there's increased monetization, the security or the, some other activities are, mm. are undertaken. And so that could lead to the assuasions or people making different decisions yeah. ordinarily from the time that it was beginning of the election year. Yeah. But yeah. this year, the next 12 months is the decision making decision. point. Yeah. So we'll ask these questions, not only of Kojo Chermantin, but also but the vice president. And, well, everybody else. Well, yeah. I mean, I've the, seen a flyer of, yeah. um, is it Mr. Jogate? Yes. I've seen a flyer of him. I've seen, or we've heard yeah. in the grapevine that... And just course, yesterday, we also had, like he, he resigned. You know, I remember I asked the question, and I linked it to uh, former prime minister of the UK, Boris Johnson, mm. where he had a number of his MPs and ministers resign in 24 hours and that was because they did not agree with his style of leadership and i was asking that same question not too long ago i remember i asked on this platform that how come we have ministers we have um you know what well, ministers because mps can't resign necessarily but why are any of our ministers not resigning to send a strong signal to the president and his team that i'm sorry this is not what you promised Ghanaians. I cannot be part of this government. Why are we seeing those number of resignations now? Because of their personal interest in becoming president. I mean, does that speak well of all of them? I would have expected that one or two of them or a number of them would have taken that bold step much earlier yeah. when things were really bad. Yeah. Nobody did anything. The most we heard was the fact that the MP said they didn't want the finance minister anymore and so they weren't too happy and they were doing everything yeah. to get him out. But nobody really <laughs> took a bold step. It's 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 so, very shocking. Behind closed doors, you agree with him or you don't? Like we need to understand where yeah. you stand. Look, the, don't the, resign later into the government. Tell us that now I want to be president. And I think they all need to be held accountable for the decisions they are making. Why are you resigning now? Because you want to run yeah. for president. How different is that from the work you've done so far in the last six years? Since 1992, you know? and we shouldn't kid ourselves. We've had the two main parties lead. So. The decision point is going to be between the MPP and the NDC. Mm. I mean, of course, we have friends in the other political parties. Unfortunately. But, but the reality is that the votes of the smaller parties have been dwindling since the year 2012. Mm. The, and the last one, we can't even talk about yeah. it. Do you understand? Yeah. And there's increased monetization of our politics. There is. So it also means that because the, it is a winner-takes-all syndrome that has plagued our politics each time we have a major transition from one political party to form to government the to the other, yeah. the state's resources get to be in the hands of that political party that's forming the government. Mm. And they use it judiciously and adequately for their own means. Yeah. But the decision point is going to be between the candidate that the NDC presents and the candidate of choice of the MPP of the delegates. MPP. And those two candidates will going, will, are going to be the ones that we need to make decisions on. Look, if it is John Mahama or any other person who is elected for the NDC, mm -hmm. it is Baumia or Alan who is elected, it is going to be the mistakes of the past that is going to haunt them. Yeah. Who committed less mistakes and contributed more? Hmm. And we have to make those assessments. The good thing is that John Mahama, Dufour, or whoever, have all been in government uh, before, before, maybe with the exception of maybe Kujo Bonsu or something like mm. who just was a KMA boss. Yeah. But if you take a look at it, we have the lead runners being Alan and then the vice president. Mm. So if you sat in cabinet, you were the head of government's economic management team. Yeah. And whether you make us feel there are decisions that were taken that were not of yours mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. They will still be bound mm -hmm. by you. Yeah. Look, yesterday, Alan Chamonti kept mentioning 1D, 1F, mm -hmm. kept mentioning private sector initiatives, and many of the things you could see that were hinged on the success of the president yeah. and his government. So if the president doesn't do well, it also means it that you don't do you. well. Mm -hmm. Indeed, all these individuals on the television are going to hinge their success to...
persuade the ordinary voter in Ghana to how successful the president's government has been since the year 2017. I don't know if Kojo Poku is also going to hinge his campaign on the successes of the MPP because we've known him to be openly criticizing the government's country. Yeah. So I, he, I don't he, know. He, he, he has taken, he has taken a, a different path, be, yeah. being uh, quite a young person and mm. not also a mind of his own. Mm. But it's also because he's built a certain portfolio of being independently minded yeah. over the years. Mm. Even though you could he hear things of um, him being um, an MPP political loyalist, etc. And he's admitted it. Yes. Many times. But now yeah. he wants to run for the primaries for the yeah. for the presidential well, candidacy yeah. of the ruling party. Mm -hmm. But you see, he's, he's one personality who has created a certain niche for himself. Yeah. But if we have to vote for such a person, it also means that he brings something to the table. He does. But the top runners, if you look at what the public opinion and the perceptive indicators are, uh, 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 Alan Kujo Chamante and the vice president. And maybe uh, Kennedy Ejipong. Maybe. I'm okay. just saying. Maybe. Okay. So, maybe. how successful was the president hmm. at the time that they will be elected on, on the ballot sheet? How successful were the president policies? And the economy and the subject of the economy, the basic economics. Yeah. That is, the basic living conditions of the ordinary Ghanaians, those yeah. indicators are going to be the benchmark at which they'll be measured by. Of course. So we're going to have individuals on the ballot sheet in 2024, December 7, hmm. who are going to be people who have experienced rulership, leadership, or government before. So we're going to measure, measure them by that. If it's John Mahama... We're going to look at his good side and the bad side. Of course. If it's Same the vice president the or it people. is Alan Chamantin, these are the measuring oh, indicators. Yeah, you can, it doesn't you can, can never tell who it, could be it, it, it doesn't look like anything they want to tell us are going to be far different from what we're going to measure them by. And if it's one district, one factory, and every day they come to sit us and give us all those prepared communication yeah. activities we tell we ask them it's not as if that we're illiterate and we don't read all the literature that comes out from the various institutions yeah. the analysis that yeah. by, by, by the bank of ghana etc we have a man a mind of our own so if you say one district one factory how have they influenced maybe uh, uh um the way we are dependent Export, on on imports or, exactly. or exports exactly. the the deficit that we tend to experience you hmm. know, so, uh, well, we're hoping that we'll come, come well prepared. Let's see. How and then, and then when we're asking the question, they should know that we're in our place to ask the questions. Because right now, you take a look at all the things that seem to be the slogans. The slogans have not measured up measured to up how successful mm -mm. they should have been, based on what they were telling us. Exactly. I remember vividly that one district, one factory, they told us that, Every district is going to have a new factory based on the raw materials that, that are find. found exactly. in the geographical area. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden we transition to a policy where existing factories were included. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even some of them very successful companies yeah. included in one district, one factory. Hmm. I mean, I expect, especially Honorable Alan Kojo Chairman, to give us a scorecard, which is something that Johnny always talks about, yeah, scorecard. Yeah, no. I mean, yesterday, yes, you come and tell us, this is what I intend to do. But you were trade minister for six years. What were you able to achieve within that period? And how does that measure to mm. where our economy sits at the moment? Hmm. Because trade is a key aspect of our economy. If we were producing enough, and we're told that we're moving away from taxation to production. We certainly have If not. we're producing enough and in turn you know, um, processing these products. How much of them have we exported? How mm. much money has it brought That's to our economy? True, true. And how has that helped us? Because now we're told we're broke and citizens have to pay, mm. literally, and sacrifice their hard-earned earnings, um, you know, for government. And so if that's the case, you need to give us your scorecard first before you tell us what your plans are. We've heard all the sloganeering before, even with the current MPP. Where did that lead us? Nowhere. Yeah. I mean, nowhere, well, literally. The good thing is that we have GTP, the Great Transformational Plan. I'm wondering if the, you know, fabric company is going to now start asking for reasons why he's named his campaign. Well, GTP if, the, if, if they 
Pay and attention to their, their brand. I think it was in GTP yesterday. I'm not, I'm not well. sure there are going to be copyright issues, but. You never know. You never know. You never know. <laughs> I hope he was in GTP. He was in African Point yesterday. Yes. I do hope that his yeah. team made sure he wore GTP. Well, if he's launching the GTP campaign. Yeah. Well, you anyway, can, I think for marketing purposes, you can look at both both sides. There's set, a certain level of uh, brand equity for well, GTP that can rub off positively for Alan, Alan Pedro Chairman. I guess. I'm not too sure whether it will be at the polls. You never know. <laughs> we'll be back.